from Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Q covering Red Hat Summit 2017. Brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back to Boston, everybody, and welcome back to Red Hat Summit. This is the Cube, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and, and I'm here with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Uh, Stu, I, we were saying this is your hundredth uh, Red Hat <laughs> Summit, so congratulations on reaching that milestone. <laughs> Joe Dickman is here. He's the senior vice president of Visuri. Cool name, uh, love it. And Michael Quintero, uh, or Quintero if you prefer, of uh, Logisticare. He's an enterprise solutions architect. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank well, you, thank so you, pleasure to be Vizuri, here. Visuri, uh, love the name, it strikes a visualization, uh, it's a, you know, tr trendy. Tell us about uh, uh, Visuri, and tell us about your relationship with Logisticare, and we'll okay. get into it. Uh, Visuri is the uh, private division of a company called AEM Corporation. We created the brand to uh, serve the commercial market for research and development. We became partners with JBoss before Red had its acquisition, so we jumped into open source in like 2003. And since then, um, we've built a business around open source technologies and um, market leading technologies that bring value. Uh, we found Logisticare because they solicited us for uh, some work to help them uh, transform their organization. And um, it's worked out well. I mean, Michael and I have been working right. together for about 18 months. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about Logisticare. So Logisticare is the, the world's largest provider of non-emergency medical transportation. So uh, we, have, we service, um, the health market around the people have benefits. They don't, um, the, the, the insurance companies don't provide transportation and the members come to us and we broker the transportation for them. Um, been in business for quite some time, do about 70 million trips a year, a little bit more. Um, and we have you know, roughly 80% of that market and we just want to stay on top of and be recognized as the world leader in that capability with the best services and the care for our members. So JBoss, of course, was like the second pillar for Red Hat after, after Red Hat Linux. Rob Bearden, who was the you know, CEO at the time, a CUBE alum and, and friend. But so, how did you sort of utilize that capability, that sort of whole you know, middleware, and, and, and how does that affect your sort of digital transformation, and mm -hmm. where did you guys all fit together? So, um, well, digital transformation is a business strategy, not a technology. So we looked at our need to be more flexible and dynamic and innovate. Mm. Um, our legacy, or what we call classic internally, software stack is limiting. It's, a, um, it's not service oriented. It's not extensible. It's a compiled, executable, distributed. Um, service the business very well. In fact, we're still using it today in, in, in some aspects. We haven't fully replaced it. And, uh, but it's, it's long in the tooth, and it's difficult for us to reach that new business requirement uh, and, and test and deliver at scale. So I, I joined the company to help modernize that architecture. Um, very quickly recognized that in order to get to um, you know, scale and, and loosely coupling and, and massive customization, that we, microservices is a good solution for us. And when we surveyed the market for a partner that could help take us there, um, well, software-wise, Red Hat has the most complete stack. They're, they, um, they offer everything we need to do, and then they have the things we, we think we're going to do in the future. So we uh, looked around for somebody who could help us get to the Red Hat, uh, enable to that with Docker, and, and you know, get to uh, uh, an auto-scaling kind of solution so we have uh, infrastructure on demand. And we found Missouri as a partner. Um, they were able to help us enable the technology and teach us how to do things that we weren't presently doing because we didn't have any kind of scale solution in house. It was just put more web servers out there. We, we started small. It started with a business process management system. If you think about all the logistics that are necessary for coordinating medical transport, mm -hmm. I'm a dialysis patient. I'm somebody that is homebound. I need to get to a physician appointment. We, we took that uh, that domain knowledge, that's part of one of the pillars of digital transformation. It's infrastructure, it's integration, and it's knowledge management. We started with knowledge management. Think about all the complex business rules for managed care organizations, reimbursement, right, which is what Logistic Care does. Quickly after we solved that problem, we looked at integration and we said, well now we have all these trading partners. So we guided Logistic Care into their next purchase, which was Fuse. So now we had an API strategy for publicly linking them to other consumer providers because they are a logistics organization for reimbursement. And as Michael said, 
we started building data centers, or Logisticare did. But guess what? Containers and OpenShift came in, and we started provisioning our development environments to Amazon Web Services, mm -hmm. and when they saw the cost savings, they abandoned building out on-prem data centers and went cloud native. So there's also a revenue driver component as well, right? It is. So, it is. So it's an OPEX and a CAPEX cost savings. Uh, let's, un let's unpack both of those. Uh, where, sure. where do you want to start? Uh, cost of the, okay. or the, the so, so telephone we, numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, uh, we're mostly a cost center based uh, company uh, in, in history, right? We have uh, 20 something call centers around the country. We service most of the US. Mm -hmm. And we have a variety of contracts that with uh, medical care providers, um, like Aetna and WellPoint and Blue Cross and those type of people, and then the, the, the managed care organizations come in. So we look to reduce our, our OPEX by diminishing the number and interfaces that we have with our call centers. People don't have to call into the call centers to do business with us. Uh, if, you know, something like one, one minute re reduction in call time is about a six or seven million dollar a year benefit for us. And there's a lot of things that people can do for themselves. I mean, you can call in and cancel a trip that they have scheduled. Um, we, we figured that about 30% of the cancellation rate, if we could get that done through a service interface, through an IVR, where they could come in and say, I'm not going to go and cancel it, that's a five or six million dollar savings for us right there. Michael, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, was there any hesitancy inside to say, okay, mm -hmm. going to kill data centers, going to go to public mm -hmm. cloud? Uh, you know, how would that transition go and anything, you know, kind of the goods and the bad and the ugly so that you could share? Well, we're a health, healthcare company. Yeah, yeah. And HIPAA and high trust certified mm -hmm. uh, coming. And there's a certain amount of fear around cloud migration. So we had to demonstrate the this knowledge, skills, and abilities around getting secure, scalable solutions out to the cloud. And this is our core application. If we don't do this well, we could become blockbuster and go away, right? So we don't want that. Um, so we had Missouri come to the table and help us understand just how secure we can be, where, how OpenShift is helping us make sure our information is never violated, there's great integrity in it, and, and then we, we did prototyping and we, we actually evaluated it. We have uh, third parties that come in and take a look at our solution and say, can, can I penetrate that? Can I get into your information? So, and we also are subject to audit, not only by the, the federal government, but by all of our, our uh, payer partners. So we have to be above the line in every criteria and we think that we are. Yeah. The, the other thing that you mentioned was when we talk about OPEX, right? That's human capital. Mm -hmm. He talked about the minute per, um, per time on a call. We also reduce tribal knowledge. Think about all these new managed care organizations in healthcare. Is it the call center representative, is it our responsibility to train them on this car and this company requires a car service? This one requires an ambulance. Mm -hmm. That knowledge, if we could eliminate that and put that in the middle tier, now what we do is we have given them a business scale. Now they have a business strategy for taking on new managed healthcare organizations. Do you have different compliance rules? Do you have different knowledge? It is no longer us having to go back out to those 20 call centers and retrain everybody because you never know where the consumers are coming from. So what they do is they answer the phone, they put their information into the system, and the system makes the deterministic uh, call as to what car service, when, and how it's reimbursed. So you, you say you automated essentially that tribal knowledge. We, we did. Eliminated it. And we've reduced it, so it not only reduced the calls per time frame, but it sped up our time of getting a call center agent from three weeks of training down to basically one. Yes, and we have the ability now to support all of our contracts from any call center. So if there's uh, disaster recovery models, or you know, uh, Phoenix, for instance, is one of our larger call centers, and they get heavy downpours of rain there. Right. There are times when people can't get to work, or they have outages. We can't afford for that function to be offline. So those skills are very easily moved to another call center to support the members that would call in there, just route the calls, and, and there's no local knowledge about you know, my contract in Arizona does a certain thing or, or in the Southwest, so uh, it's very simple to support our population from any call center. That gives us the benefit of providing very quali high quality service, because people, when they call in, they expect us to service them. Joe, I, I want to follow up. We were talking sure. about kind of, you know, hesitancy. You know, healthcare tends to be a little bit conservative. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I hear things like, you know, microservices and containers. You know, these are still relatively new things. Mm -hmm. Is OpenShift, the sh open, I'm sorry, excuse me, OpenShift, the, the the solution that allows you to, you know, deliver that with confidence uh, yes. to, to your customer? OpenShift. OpenShift. Yeah. Sorry about <laughs> Alas, that. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've said things. <laughs> Hold on. Remove mouth. <laughs> um, OpenShift does. Yeah. What happens is the Docker container format 
enables us to pre-configure those servers and those workloads, and we talked about microservices. We wanted to reduce uh, the business decisions or the integrations into the smallest component. What we also wanted to do is to provide some taxonomy with them. These are for billing. These are for scheduling. These are for uh, a different aspect of the business. By that, we can change, and we can change often. Mm -hmm. How long did it take before if we wanted to make a change to some of the um, infrastructure? So, Weeks, months? Well, even longer. I mean, infrastructure is hard to acquire, and then, you know, when you talk about the CapEx expense, it's very easy, I mean, there's a refresh cycle for equipment that you get, so even when you have it, you have to pay attention to maintenance and keeping that thing going forward. As you add scale to your business, you got to go acquire more storage, and it's, it's not a dynamic thing. You have to plan, the planning cycle is very difficult. We move to the cloud, now we have infrastructure on demand. There's a myriad of choices of, of platforms and, and uh, solutions that we can apply to our business model. Things that we hadn't even thought of before, we're actually looking now at, at potentially moving our call centers uh, away from our, in, our, our in-house uh, standard and move into an Amazon provided call center solution because it can scale and we can consolidate and we can provide service from anywhere in the world. That's a, that's a big benefit to us. Is it, so, uh, call center as a service, essentially, yes. is something you're evaluating. Well, think about how big they are. 80 million rides, right? What they didn't want to do is be disintermediated by the newcomers, right? The Ubers, the Lyfts. They had a large footprint, so he used the word blockbuster before, and that's what they use a lot internally. There's one who left in, in Alaska, I heard. Who remembers, <laughs> that's right. who remembers <laughs> Blockbuster, and then they remember how Blockbuster was no longer in business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what they wanted to do is to ensure that um, they agilely transform not only their software engineering discipline, mm -hmm. but their firm beliefs. So everybody from business analysis through implementation has this new agile approach. And one of the features that we developed um, we used to send people home after four hours of dialysis in taxi cabs. So uh, an executive or a team at Logisticare said, you know what, we need dependency. We need um, certified drivers. They actually entered a, into a business relationship with Lyft. And you want to talk about an agile enterprise? Mm -hmm. We developed a custom interface into Lyft with a scheduling service that never existed within five weeks. That's right. We would never have been able to do that and we moved our first ride after five weeks, and since then, we're currently up to about five or 6,000, but it's going to scale to thousands, and the goal is to, again, as Michael said, let people interface with logistic care by their device of choice. If we don't have to have people call in to cancel rides or call in to schedule, mm -hmm. then the business scales, and it scales without human capital. And, and the enablers there were obviously, well, we always talk about a people process and technology, yes. so the technology behind that was what, you, you're living this API economy that everybody talks about. We are, about. that is and exactly and what we did. And, and, and then you've got underneath that, uh, OpenShift, what else is sort of there uh, that you're leveraging? BPMS, BRMS, uh, so business process management system, business rules management system, JBoss Fuse for an integration strategy and, and camel routes, and then OpenShift, and then we do Ansible for doing server provisioning. And, and I have to ask you about the security question again that Stu was you know, poking at before. We've heard from a lot of practitioners that the security in the cloud is just fine, it's great actually. It the challenge is it doesn't necessarily exactly map the edicts of our organization. So mm -hmm. is that, is, did you find that and did you have to maybe change the way in which you plugged into AWS, or was it just sort of out of the box for you? So you have to understand a shared responsibility model when you move to the cloud, right? I mean, they're very good at, at the security in the cloud, or of the cloud, and you have to be good at the security in the cloud. You can choose bad technology at Amazon and be insecure, um, but they have a, a published HIPAA standard uh, that if you use these technologies, then you can be HIPAA certified. We applied our high trust certification standards to the, our choices. Um, we're making very solid, and, and this isn't willy nilly. This kind of, I mean, I, I've been with in a HIPAA solution for 20 years, so it's not like I don't know what is required and what the auditors are going to ask us. So, but I do want to redress one point that we, we can't go past is that when we, we, our customers are getting better service from all this we're doing. I agree. When, the, when, the, when somebody calls us and says, I'm ready to go home from the doctor, and they didn't know what time they were going to go home when they scheduled their ride to the doctor, we can get somebody there in, in 10 minutes now to come wow. and get them wow. and take them home. That's a great satisfier. Rather than having to wait 90 minutes for some, us to find somebody that can go pick them up, 
that world has changed, right? And that's a great customer satisfier, and that's why they're going to love mm. continuing to do yeah, business with us. Great business outcome from something that you probably couldn't have done, you know, that's right. no, five years ago, even maybe mm -hmm. two years ago. They're a social <laughs> caring organization. Yeah. One of the largest um, rides that they do is for kidney dialysis. Mm -hmm. And those people, I mean, yeah, I'm, I've never had it, but somebody sitting there on four hours of dialysis, the last thing you want to do is wait 90 minutes for a cab. Mm -hmm. You want to go home, you also want to have an authoritative source of the drivers, credential drivers. Right. And that's something that we're working on so that not only do this older generation, right, and think about the baby boomers, which I'm actually part of, you know, Me too. the, the, the age right. population yeah. is growing. So the need for these types of services is growing too, mm -hmm. and we become accustomed and we get set in our ways. So, and people might be fearful. Any taxi showing up versus now, a Lyft shows up, you know who the driver is, you see the car, you see that. There's a high degree of confidence that Logisticare has the best interests of their constituents. Right. So they manage that type of business. So mm -hmm. it's not just technology, it really is uh, a caring and, and uh, methodical organization. But we have the ability to follow patterns that are already established. We look at how Netflix handles their just widely distributed kinds of interface devices. What are all, you know, how do they figure out what kind of data stream to send back to what he's got in his hand versus what I have? We're following the same kind of model and we're using the technology platform to our best advantage to make sure that we're talking to someone who's got a flip phone differently than we are talking to somebody who's got an SA Plus, <laughs> right? Because, it, because the payload can't be the same, but the backend services don't need to know that. We've built a, a solution here that can examine the request and return the right uh, data stream. So where's my ride might be just around the corner or it might be a map with a breadcrumb trail and a picture of the driver and all of that like you get with a Lyft or an Uber. So, uh, you know, we're building it. Great case study, gentlemen. Thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. Well, thank sharing. you very much Appreciate for having you. me. You're welcome. We enjoyed the time. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from Red Hat Summit in Boston. Right back. <laughs>